Hey, what's going on guys? So, have you ever watched a movie, seen a familiar actor in it, and been all like, Oh man, I know that face. Where do I know that person from? Duh! Well, this new series I'm piloting will aim to answer that question. My plan is to go through some very well-known films you likely have seen a million times and show you who every actor in the movie is, who they are and what they're known for. Because you might be surprised just how lush the careers are of actors with even the smallest of parts. And Star Wars, I think is a good place to start. For these films are packed with famous names and cameos. And I am convinced that I am going to blow your mind here. Because there's some very famous people in these films that you have seen many times and you likely have never recognized them. Or there might be some lesser known actors you'll see in this video and you'll be like, wait, that person was also in this thing? Huh. So best I show rather than tell. So let's begin with Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. With all due respect, the ambassadors for the Supreme Chancellor wish to board immediately. So playing these Republic cruise pilots is Silas Carson on the left and Brona Gallagher on the right. Gallagher is a prolific Irish singer slash actress. She's been in a ton of stuff like Pulp Fiction and here she is in Sherlock Holmes. Oh, I see two men. Brothers. Not in blood, but in bond. Now, if you're a Star Wars nerd and you don't know who Carson is, this will interest you. Carson is the man behind Jedi Ki Adi Mundi and Newt's Gunray. Yeah, this is what he looks like without all the prosthetics. Also, kind of bizarre he's in two places at once here, huh? I think this might qualify as suicide. Make yourselves comfortable. My master will be with you shortly. Now, TC-14 is voiced by Scottish film and stage actress Lindsay Duncan. She's been in a ton of films and shows like the Oscar-winning Birdman. And I'm going to close your play. Would you like to know why? Because yeah. I hate you. Also, remember that green leader pilot from Return of the Jedi? Three of them coming in, 20 degrees. Well, that's actor Hilton McRae, who is Lindsay Duncan's husband. Such a cute couple. Master Yoda said I should be mindful of the future, but not at the expense of the moment. Of course, we have our leads, Ewan McGregor and Liam Neeson, both extremely well-known actors today, but it might interest you to know how they got their start. Neeson's first acting role was that of Jesus Christ in the 1978 movie Pilgrim's Progress. Father. It's funny because it's Obi-Wan that gets all the memes about looking like Jesus. You, you sure you don't want to change your messiah there, internet? <sighs> and McGregor, who, fun fact, is the nephew of Dennis Lawson, the man who played Wedge Antilles in the original trilogy, got his acting debut on the small screen. One of his very first roles was in the 1993 four-part television series Scarlet and Black, acting alongside Rachel Weisz. Mamzell, I pledge to you eternal secrecy. All that has transpired will be consigned forthwith to the sea of forgetfulness. The Chancellor should never have brought them into this. Kill them immediately. Playing Palpatine is Scottish actor Ian McDermott, a prolific theatre actor, joining the Royal Shakespeare Company in 1974 and acting alongside several legendary names like Ian McKellen and Judi Dench. He is a farmer that hanged himself. On the expectation of plenty. Oh. His movie exploits are too notable outside of Star Wars, but here he is in Sleepy Hollow. You have moved the body? I did. You must never move the body. Why not? Because. What is going on down there? We lost the mission, sir. So this is crazy. The voice of this Neimoidian here is provided by Amanda Lucas, one of George Lucas's daughters, who has a live action cameo later on during the pod race scene. Also worth noting that Amanda had a brief stint as an MMA fighter. I think I just keep doing what I'm doing and, you know, keep winning fights and keep winning them decisively and showing that I'm, you know, the real deal and that I'm here to stay. I would pay big money to see her kick the shit out of some toxic Star Wars fans. The Senate it's will never. Now. Do you think she suspects an attack? 
So this Neymardian, canonically known as Rune Harko, is voiced by James Taylor, who's done minor work on various television series over the years. Here he is in the very early days of the Australian soap Neighbours. Lorraine isn't going to marry you. I can't say I'm sorry. In fact, I'm delighted. For all our sakes. Check the transmission generator. So here we have a cameo. This guard is played by Roman Coppola. Yeah, Coppola. He's the son of Francis Ford Coppola. And he's had a hell of a career himself as a screenwriter for films like Moonrise Kingdom and Isle of Dogs. And for directing the award-winning Mozart in the Jungle. And you might be wondering, Sophia Coppola is his sister, right? And you are correct. And she makes a cameo in The Phantom Menace 2 as one of Amidala's handmaidens. Sophia is of course known for her directorial endeavours in films like Marie Antoinette and Lost in Translation. A communications disruption can mean only one thing, invasion. So this gentleman is film and stage actor Oliver Ford Davies. Like McDiarmid, he's also a member of the Royal Shakespeare Company. He's also been in a ton of films and shows. Here he is in Game of Thrones. Like many, he has a brief stint in that show. And he also had the honour of playing the Archbishop of Canterbury. In Johnny English. Do you, or do you not, have tattooed on your bottom the words, Jesus is coming, look busy. Are you insane? The Senate would revoke their trade franchise and they'd be finished. So quick question, do you know what Captain Panaka's first name is? It's Quash. Seriously, that's his name, Quash. Now, if you're wondering, that name derives from the name of Panaka's actor, Hugh Quashy, another Royal Shakespeare Company member. For British audiences, will know him best for his role on the medical drama series, Holby City. Oh, and you might also know him as the immortal sword fighter, Sunder from Highlander. The gathering is here. Time's almost caught us, my friend. I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. So Natalie Portman, of course, plays Queen Amidala, later became a very famous actress, but Phantom Menace was far from her first role. You might be familiar with her film debut in Leon the Professional, but did you also know that before becoming an actress, Portman was part of a kid's pop group? But not just any pop group. An environmental pop group. Ah! I see the forest growing tall. Smell the air so pure and sweet. Now this is Natalie all grown up. Portman, 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 Portman. Yeah. Your husband and his best friend just as Portman. They grow up so fast. Either choice presents great danger to us all. And many of you will know that Kira Knightley plays Amidala's bodyguard double. Also became very well known, though like Portman, this wasn't her first acting gig either. Here she is at about age 9 in an episode of the police procedural series, The Bill. He set traps for us. M my mates were chicken, they didn't want to go in. But you did. I had to. Mr. Codjad and Binks, Mr. Your humble servant. That won't be necessary. Oh, but it is. It is demanded by the guards, it is. Ah, Jar Jar, voiced and motion captured by Ahmed Best. Recently, Best hosted a Star Wars themed game show for kids called Jedi Temple Challenge. And believe it or not, despite the backlash he received, he went on to voice Jar Jar in future Star Wars projects and even voiced him in Robot Chicken. So burn your face. Ah! Jar Jar. Any penny? What's that? No, uh. oh, again, Jaja. You are going to the bosses. You are in big doo doo this time. So, Captain Tarpals here is voiced by Welsh actor Steve Spears. He's appeared in films like Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, and Aragon. The King Strip, best cut there is. The fat just melts into the meat. Be gone with him. So Boss Nass is voiced by the one and only Brian Blessed, who's a very well-known television presenter and actor in the UK. You might know him from Black Adder or Flash Gordon, but American audiences might recognize him better as the voice of Clayton in Disney's Tarzan. Professor, you are here to find gorillas, not indulge some girlish fantasy. So 
Also, I'm unable to pinpoint where he is in this scene, but amongst all the extras here, Nathan Hamill is amongst them, the son of Mark Hamill. Apparently he plays some kind of law clerk here. Uh, being marched off by battle droids. So there's one long shot they take from the stairs where they have the yeah. celebration at the end. So this droid is voiced by Peter Saravinovich, who also voices this Gungan. There's a coming! But he also has a more notable role in this movie. At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge and cheese. <laughs> Yeah, he dubs over Ray Park as the voice of Darth Maul. And apparently he was going to return as Maul in Solo. Though Disney decided to give all future Maul roles to Sam Witwer, who voices him in all the animated shows. Anyway, Serafinovich might look familiar to you. Here he is in Shaun of the Dead. It's fucking Sunday and I've got to go to fucking work in four fucking hours because every other fucker in my fucking department is fucking ill. Now can you see why I'm so fucking angry? And here he is in Guardians of the Galaxy. What a bunch of a-holes. As for Ray Park himself, you might know him as Toad from X-Men, Snake Eyes from the G.I. Joe movies, and he also had the dubious honor to star in Ballistic X vs. Sever, otherwise known as the worst reviewed movie of all time on Rotten Tomatoes. We've lost contact with our tactical unit. Then who's manning the assault vehicle? That's what we need to make the Shit! Park also cameos elsewhere in the movie as this Naboo soldier. Shield generator's been hit! So playing the pilot here is actor Ralph Brown, who's had roles in films like With Nail and I, Alien 3, and Wayne's World 2. That was quite a show, man. You were at Woodstock? Excellent! What was it like? Well, it rained all morning and then it cleared up in the afternoon. And that's it. I almost remembered something else then, but it's gone. Thank you, R2-D2. So the man inside R2-D2 is the late Kenny Baker. He's appeared in many films like The Elephant Man and Time Bandits. That was no man. That was a supreme being. You mean God? Well, we don't know him that well. We only worked for him. He also played the Ewok, Paplu, in Return of the Jedi. That was the one who stole the speeder bike. He also was originally going to play Wicket as well, but he felt ill and so the 11-year-old Warwick Davis got the role. Ah yes, Nubian! We have lots of that. So one Andy Seacombe voices Watto. No money, no parts, no deal. He's penned his own fantasy novels and does occasional acting work in video games and television. For example, here he is in Killing Eve. Hello, Constantine. Do come through. I'm a pilot, you know, and someday I'm gonna fly away from this place. Ah, Jake Lloyd. Definitely best known for this role, though he also played Arnold Schwarzenegger's son in the Christmas movie Jingle All The Way. He also had a bit role in an episode of ER. Hey, how you doing there, fella? I puked twice in the waiting room. He's kind of embarrassed. There's six other men in line for the bathroom. Nowadays, though, his life is nothing short of tragic. He was arrested for reckless driving. He allegedly assaulted his own mother. His sister, Madison, who cameos during the parade scene at the end of the movie, tragically lost her life at age 26. And now Lloyd has been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. So this is a good one. So Bulba is voiced by Scottish voice actor Lewis MacLeod. You go to Bantapudu. <laughs> who's a talented impressionist and has done a ton of voice roles. He's the current voice of Postman Pat. If you happen to play Theme Park World, he voices the advisor in that game. One of your rides is about to break down. Take cover! And here's an odd one. For several Star Wars games, he had the honor to play the role of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, so Bulba has provided the voice for Obi-Wan. What? It's not about the mission master. It's something elsewhere, elusive. Oh, my bones are aching. Storm's coming up, Annie. You better get home quick. 
So this lady is the late Margaret Towner, playing the market vendor, Jira. Towner did a bunch of television roles, notably appearing in the Ricky Gervais comedy drama, Derek, still acting well into her 90s like a boss. Where did you get your nails done? Did it myself. Really? You're cleverer than me. You can't be very clever then, because I'm thick. Don't think a thick person could do art. I don't want you to raise. It's awful. I die every time what makes you do it. So Anakin's mother, Shmi, is played by Swedish actress Pinilla August. August has had a prolific career in many films in Sweden, collaborating many times with director Ingmar Bergman. But one especially interesting role of note from August is from the made-for-TV movie Mary, Mother of Jesus, starring Batman himself, Christian Bale, as JC, and August as Mary of Nazareth. You gave him to me to bring into this world. I try to keep him safe. And here's the weird thing. Not only does August play yet another role as a mother who gives birth with no father, but this made-for-TV movie came out in 1999, the exact same year Phantom Menace came out. Talk about incredibly specific typecasting. Oh, hello, I am C-3PO Human Cyborg Relations. How might I serve you? So many of you will know that 3PO is played by Anthony Daniels. But did you also know that Anthony Daniels once played Legolas? Yeah, that Legolas. Daniels voiced him in the 1978 Ralph Bakshi version of Lord of the Rings. No resting can help your Mr. Frodo now. Only the hands of Elrond in Rivendell can do that. Wow, a real astrodroid. How do you get so lucky? So Anakin's friend Kitster is played by Dhruv Chanchani, who now works at a web design company. He still does interviews from time to time about his time on set, including this one where they were kind enough to make him a custom Funko Pop for his character. This is amazing. <laughs> Things I never thought I would see in my life. My oh. own bobblehead. Oh, no, you're okay, Annie. <laughs> Did you know that's Warwick Davis playing that alien? Yeah, and that's not the only cameo he makes in this movie. Here he is during the pod race scene. <laughs> It might also interest non-UK viewers that Davis has had game show hosting duties on British television, most recently hosting Tenable on ITV. Hello and welcome to Tenable, the show where naming a top 10 can win you a top cash prize. You've been working on that thing for years. That there is George Lucas's other daughter, Katie Lucas. Fans of the Clone Wars TV show will have a lot to thank her for, as she went on to help write several episodes for it. The best thing about Lucasfilm is that we really are a family, and I know I'm not just saying that because I am family with George. It's fun to like be in a room with a bunch of people that you don't know, and by the end, you guys are like best friends. It's never gonna run. This girl's name is Megan Udall. Information on her is scarce, but she apparently grew up to work as an accountant, working as the payroll accountant on Rise of Skywalker. Come on, let's go and play ball. Keep racing, Annie. You're gonna be Bug Squad. And this kid's name is Oliver Walpole, who is the son of Peter Walpole, the film's production designer. Turns out Oliver followed his father's footsteps. For example, he worked as an assistant set decorator on the Witcher TV series. Comes on to pod races. That's absolutely right. And a big turnout here from all corners of the Outer Rim territories. Fode and Bead here are voiced by Greg Proops and Scott Capuro who originally weren't joined together. Yeah, the two were planned to be fully practical aliens made up with makeup, but then in post they decided to go the fully CG route. Anyway, Kapuro is an American comedian with some film roles like here in Mrs. Doubtfire. The man has five o'clock shadow at 8.30 a.m. and you're worried about strings? And Proops you might know from his appearances on Whose Line Is It Anyway? The announcer in the Wii game Mad World. Greetings, Gore Sport fans! It's a beautiful evening on Jefferson Island, just perfect weather for our unwilling contestants to compete in the Varigan City Death Watch. And is one of the voices of Bob the Builder. Today's the day we're gonna build you all a shelter to sleep under, too. <laughs> 
So Bib Fortuna here is played by a different person from Return of the Jedi. This is Matthew Wood, who works as a sound editor for many Star Wars projects. He also portrayed Fortuna in The Mandalorian, and also is a talented voice actor, providing the vocals for Odie Mandurell, the battle droids in The Clone Wars, Take this upstairs, and be sure not to drop it. Whoa! Wow! Kylo Ren in Star Wars Resistance, and for the one and only, General Grievous. I am the Needless to say, the dude is a legend. <laughs> so Star Wars nerds will recognise Bounty Hunter Aura Singh here, who apparently was going to play a role in Episode 2, but got switched with Zan Wassell for some reason. Though she does get her time to shine in the Clone Wars TV show, and eventually gets offed by Beckett, apparently. You killed Aura Singh. Pushed her. Pretty sure the fog killed her. Anyway, she's played for all but two seconds here by model Michonne Boriag, who apparently is good friends with Amy Allen and Shannon McRandall. Allen, who later plays Jedi Ayla Sakura, and McRandall, who portrays fan favourite Mara Jade in photos taken for Star Wars cards games. Look, here she is with Mark Hamill. How's that for a peek into an alternate universe? Welcome, Your Highness. It's an honour to finally meet you in person. Valorum, of course, is played by Terence Stamp. Very famous actor, my audience probably will know him best as General Zod in Superman 2. Come to me, son of Jarrell! Kneel before Zod! I do not believe the Sith could have returned without us knowing. Yep, Samuel L. Jackson as Mace Windu needs a no introduction. Apparently, Jackson is a huge Star Wars fan and was ecstatic to get the role. And they were very accommodating for him. The prop department were kind enough to engrave BMF on his lightsaber hilt. Which one is it? It's the one that says bad motherfucker. Now, I was wanting to show you all what Jackson's very first film role was. But here's the thing. I literally can't. The film is called Together for Days, also known as Black Cream. It came out in 1972 and starred Clifton Davis and Lois Childs, Childs being the Bond girl from Moonraker. But the thing about this movie is that it's lost. There's no known copies of it anywhere. Apparently, somebody bought a film print of it for $725 in 2017, but whoever that was hasn't shared it with anyone. So as of today, it remains elusive. Oh. Trained as a Jedi, you request for him, hmm? Yoda's voice and puppeteering work is provided by the one and only Frank Oz. Now, Oz has too many voice and puppeteering roles to count, but amongst them are Fungus in Monsters, Inc. You're still behind, Randall. You know, maybe I should realign the screen intake Just valve. Just get me another door! Ah, the door, yes, door! Many of the Muppets, like Fozzy Bear and Miss Piggy, <laughs> And also many characters in Sesame Street, like Cookie Monster. I will be, uh, uh quiet like this. And then uh, you talk like that and you go crazy! There. <laughs> <laughs> the boy's here to see Padme. Let him in. So this is another very well-known actor with a bizarrely small part. This guard is played by Dominic West, who's been in a ton of stuff like The Wire, 300, and the 2018 live-action Tomb Raider, where he played Lara's father. I began searching the world, desperate for a, a hint of another realm, for proof that the supernatural is real. I'm sorry, Amy, but Pat is not here right now. Who is it? Anakin Skywalker, to see Padme, your highness. Playing the handmaid in Rabe is Brazilian actress and model Carol Cristina da Silva, an avid puppeteer apparently, and now runs her own interview focused YouTube channel. May the force be with you. <laughs> this is incredible. We recommend a commission be sent to Naboo to ascertain the truth. So this name Odeon is voiced by Toby Longworth, who also voiced the alien merchant who demanded Jar Jar pay for the food he ate. Longworth's done a ton of acting work, like here he is in the IT crowd. Are you very old? Let's move on! <laughs> oh, shut up! <laughs> and here is his voice in the horror game Amnesia, a machine for pigs. I held your hand and watched the blood pool between your legs. 
he lived long enough to see Edwin, but not Enoch. I will take care of them, my love. I promise you this. The Congress of Malastare concurs with the Honorable Delegate from the Trade Federation. A commission must be appointed. So this alien from Malastare is voiced by a guy called Mark Silk, who's done commercial voice work portraying characters like Scooby-Doo and Johnny Bravo. scooby dooby doo He's done TV show announcer work on shows like Ant and Dex, Saturday Night Takeaway. Jump on board, take a ride, that's Ant McCartlin. Jump on board, feel the high, that's Declan Donnelly. Oh, and he also does the voice for the American version of Bob the Builder. Windows and a front door. It's a house. Who'd have thought Phantom Menace had two Bob the Builders in it? Order! So the Senate speaker here, Mass Emeda, is played by Jerome St. John Blake. Blake had the honor of playing a whole bunch of aliens in the prequels, including all these guys. He also did standing acting for the film's pre-visual work. Our fate is in your hands. So in this scene, you might be surprised to hear that Thorin Oakenshield is in it. Yeah, actor Richard Armitage is right here as one of the Naboo star pilots. Armitage went on to do a ton of stuff, so many roles in so many television series, but my audience might recognize him most as the voice of Trevor Belmont in the Castlevania Netflix series. Dracula taught a human woman how to be a doctor. <laughs> what was first, bloodletting? <laughs> Fighters, straight ahead. Roger Bravo, leader. This is actor Clarence Smith. He has another Shakespearean actor, but he's also done lots of TV work, like as this barrister on Coronation Street. You love your wife, while freely admitting to an affair with your babysitter. A woman you claim to have, um, cared for. What's that? It's blowing up from the inside. So this female pilot is played by actress Celia Imry. She's been in many films and shows, like The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel and Bridget Jones's Diary. I was just saying, Jeffrey didn't contact you either to tell you that the Tarts and Vickers concept had gone out of the window. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, right. Lovely dress. Very exotic. And she was a long-time collaborator with comedian Victoria Wood. This place is a disgrace. Filthy, unhygienic, the food's not safe to eat, and the staff are all positively diseased. £2.95, please. On the other hand, it's very cheap and easy to park. <laughs> Now that poor pilot was ILM visual effects supervisor John Noel, who has done tons of visual effects work over the years, and along with his brother Thomas, created a little program called Photoshop. Y you might have heard of it. Well, Photoshop's become an integral tool in all filmmaking. <laughs> Now this is interesting, this elated pilot is played by actor Benedict Taylor. Now, do you remember that green twi'lek that gets eaten by the Rancor in episode 6? <laughs> well that was actress Femi Taylor. Yeah, these two are brother and sister. To answer the question you all have in your head, Femi was adopted. Now Taylor's done lots of television work himself, and he has worked with Lucas before. Here he is in an episode of the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Now, oh, Lieutenant, unless you're dressed for a masquerade, we fully expect to be saluted. Your boldness has saved our people, Your Majesty. It's you who should be congratulated. So two cameos in this scene. This guy is longtime Star Wars producer Rick McCallum. It's so dense, every single image has so many things going on. And the guy to the left of him is longtime Star Wars sound designer Ben Burt, who might interest you to know did the voice for Wally. Wally's voice started with recordings I would make of myself. And then it's analyzed and broken up into its component parts within the computer. <laughs> Also, Bert has cameoed before in Star Wars. This is him in Return of the Jedi. Free! Yeah. Ah! Solo killed Wally. -E. Unbelievable. Ah! 
So this animal handler is a guy called Dan Madston, who is the former president of the official Star Wars fan club. I guess the dude did such a good job they offered him a cameo. <laughs> And finally, there's a notable actress who appears in the crowd here. Right here. Apparently, that's Sally Hawkins, famous for her roles in Blue Jasmine, Godzilla, and The Shape of Water. I haven't ever seen it. You're in a Star Wars movie and you haven't seen it? No. That might no. be a first. <laughs> That'll make Star Wars fans, and they're intense, that will make them angry. I know, I know. I should How dare start... you? No, they'll be, they'll be uh, very angry about that. I've seen it. I have seen it. <laughs> Senator, we're making our final approach into Coruscant. So let's start with this Naboo lieutenant, who's played by English actor Steve John Shepard. Shepard mostly sticks to the small screen. He's probably most famous for his role as Michael Moon in EastEnders. Ever wanted to see the most PG-rated knife death in history? <laughs> well, now you have. Oh, and here he is in Layer Kick, acting alongside Daniel Craig. Should be a doddle. All the same, aren't they? Fucking junkies and crackheads. Chuck him a few quid. Don't cough. I guess I was wrong. There was no danger at all. So the first of many oceanic actors in this video is the diversely talented Jay Lagaya playing the role of Captain Typho. This guy is amazing. He's had a prolific acting career on New Zealand and Australian television, appearing in shows like the soap opera Home and Away. Well, have you asked yourself? Yes. And all the answers I come up with involve you. Here he is playing the warlord Draco in Xena Warrior Princess. Xena, you look good. And Lagaya is a supremely talented singer as well, appearing in many Australian stage productions like here in Wicked. Cause it feels wonderful. They think I'm wonderful. Hey, look who's wonderful. This corn fed hick. And he also performed in The Lion King too, of which in he played Mufasa. Yeah, but you didn't realize Star Wars had two Mufasas in it, huh? What? He also does a lot of songs for children, and you can bet your ass I'm gonna play his Christmas album this year. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. A jingle bell swing and jingle bell ring. Snowing and blowing up bushels of fun. Now the jingle hop has begun. Lady, I'm so sorry. I failed you, Senator. Playing the um, late handmaiden Corday is Mexican actress and writer Veronica Segura. Segura has had minor roles in films and TV. Here she is in the comedy slasher flick Club Dread, acting alongside Bill Paxton. Well, hey, how about the grand tour? Yeah, sure. Right this way. Also, from 2006 to 2008, she wrote columns for the Mexican edition of Playboy. You really think that's a wise decision under these stressful times? American actor Jimmy Smits plays Senator Bail Organa. Smits has had a lush television career. His very first role was in the pilot episode of Miami Vice. Just the pilot episode. No! Quick tip, stay clear of Jimmy Smits. He has a habit of getting unexpectedly blown up. But his career only went up from there, from his award-winning stints in shows like LA Law and NYPD Blue. Police! Oh, and back in 1989, he played the role of a repairman on Pee Wee's Playhouse. Is that a wrench in your pocket? Huh? That's a wrench. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Yvonne. Yvonne. <laughs> Take a deep breath. I haven't seen her in 10 years, Master. So, grown up Anakin is played by Canadian actor Hayden Christensen. Now, Christensen got his acting start in commercials, advertising everything from cough syrup to cereal. Let's do it! Breakfast isn't breakfast without... Snap, crackle, crack, cows, rice, krispies! Then he transitioned to acting in many TV shows, with appearances in Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps, of which in he gets transformed into a puppet. So, hey, did you hear the one about the three kids that tried to outsmart a dummy? No, Sloppy, tell me all about it. 
ironically, this would only rank second in Hayden Christensen's most wooden performances. Okay, okay, sorry. That was harsh. No, in, in all honesty, Christensen is not a bad actor. And you only need to look outside of his Star Wars career to see that. In between episodes 2 and 3, he was praised for his performance in the 2003 biographical drama film, Shattered Glass. There are 16,800 magazines in this country, but only one calls itself the in-flight magazine of Air Force One. And that's the thrill of working at the New Republic. And after Star Wars, he went on to do many more films, none of which were particularly successful. He reunited with Samuel L. Jackson for 2008's Jumper. He acted alongside Nicolas Cage in the 2014 American Chinese production of Outcast. And most recently, he acted alongside Harvey Keitel in the sci-fi film The Last Man. Oh, and in 2018, he took part in a charity football match here in the UK. Ever wanted to see Darth Vader take a penalty against Martian Manhunter? Christensen way over! Well, not like that you wouldn't. I may have to kill myself. I hit the ship, but they used a decoy. So Zam Wiesel is played by Australian actress Liana Walsman. Walsman got the role when casting director Robin Gerland saw her perform in a play. And that play also happened to star actress Rose Byrne. And I'll talk about her next. Outside of Star Wars, Walsman has done lots of TV show work. Here she is in the Australian prison drama Wentworth. Yeah, I know. They don't want to hear about rehabilitation and what it costs. They want to know that the criminals are locked up and they can sleep safely at night. So I am selling it to them as money well spent to ensure their safety when the women are released. And in 2004, she got a starring role in the TV miniseries Jessica, acting alongside Alan Grant himself, Sam Neill. And you say that if I sign and agree to give up Joey, then it's forever. You'd rather stay in here than sign. You all right, my lady? So yes, we have the now well-known Rose Byrne playing the handmaiden Dorme. You'll know Byrne for her wealth of film roles. Bridesmaids, Neighbours, Insidious, X-Men, the list goes on. But what about her roles pre-Star Wars? Well, her very first acting gig was in the 1994 Australian drama Dallas Doll. It's exactly the right astrological conditions for a UFO to land. It's gonna happen. I know it. Another one of her early roles was in the comedy crime film Two Hands, starring alongside the Joker himself, Heath Ledger. Making boats? Yeah. Well, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? Yeah. Better than hanging around assholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Ledger, he was actually one of the actors in the running to play adult Anakin in the prequels. I actually think that would have been a great choice. I could totally see that. So these two alien motorists here are voiced by General Grievous himself, Matthew Wood. I talked about Wood in my Phantom Menace video. This guy's voice knows no bounds. You wanna buy some death sticks? You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. Australian actor Matt Duran plays the death stick dealer, Elan Slees Bagano. Yeah, seriously, that's his name. Most recently, Duran had a starring role in an Australian thriller production called Intersection. Your thirst for money is insatiable. Yeah, I did what you said. Hi, my sister's getting a visa. I'm not getting any of his company. No, you can let Josh go. Though you'll definitely know Duran best as Mouse from The Matrix. To deny our own impulses is to deny the very thing that makes us human. Oh, and speaking of The Matrix... <laughs> See this woman checking out Anakin? That is actress Fiona Johnson, who you might know better as the lady in the red dress. That they will fight to protect it. So yeah, in this nightclub scene is both Mouse and the woman he designed? There's a theory there somewhere. At Matt Pat, Super Carlin Brothers, any theory channel out there? Go nuts. <laughs> So we have a few more notable cameos in this scene I want to rush through. Recognize this patron? 
This is, of course, C-3PO himself, Anthony Daniels in the flesh. There is one thing worse than working with me, it's being an extra in a Star Wars movie, it's okay. <laughs> And in this shot, we have Jar Jar Binks actor Ahmed Best on the right, and on the left is daughter of George Lucas, Katie, as this purple Twi'lek. This Jedi walks by and ruins my action. Her sister Amanda also shows up in this scene, right here. And there is another child of George Lucas that appears in the film, but I'll talk about him in my episode 3 video. Someone to see you, honey! So this is interesting. This droid, known as Flo, is voiced by Australian actress Susie Porter. Now you see this lady sat next to Dex? Believe it or not, that is Susie Porter in the flesh. Yeah, she voices the droid in this scene, but she's also here in a live action capacity. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Apparently this scene was shot twice, with Porter performing her lines in live action and in a voiceover booth. And then they decided to go the droid route for the final edit. Anyway, Porter has had many film and television roles, like Walsman she also starred in Wentworth, but many seasons after Walsman left. Shit lawyers, don't do anything to aggravate your sentence. Keep your head down well. Where did that get me? Oh, well, now people are gonna pay. And she starred in a few raunchier titles in her time, like the 2000 Aussie rom-com Better Than Sex, where she has a one-night stand with Faramir himself, David Wenham. Sir London. Must be an exciting place to live. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, apart from the cold, the rain, the filth, the huge cost of everything. Oh, and the English, no. It's a great place to live. <laughs> what you got here is a Camino Sabre Dart. Playing Dexter Jetster is Australian actor Ronald Falk. Hey! Falk is sadly no longer with us, but he was a prolific stage actor with a few on-screen roles in his time, like here in the Guy Pearce-led Aussie crime series, Jack Irish. No, no, I, I thought I might have dropped something, but... I hate to say it, but it looks like the system you're searching for doesn't exist. Another Australian actor who unfortunately passed away is actress Alethea McGrath, playing Jedi Master Jocasta Nu. Now, according to McGrath, it was originally planned that Nu was going to be written as a former lover of Count Dooku, though this idea got scrapped for the movie's release. Anyway, back in the late 80s, early 90s, McGrath had the occasional stint in the Australian soap Neighbours. Now look, love, I think you're making some kind of mistake. I mean, I haven't been near the clothesline since I got here. Fiddlesticks! And don't you love me, you pervert! And more recently, she starred in films like Inspector Gadget 2. Ma'am. Do you know that drag racing on public roads is illegal? But after I... There are no buts when it comes to the law. And her last role was alongside Nicolas Cage in Knowing. I knew something had frightened the poor dear, but we never could get her to tell us what it was. Hey you, no droids. <laughs> get out of here. Yet another actor no longer with us is Kiwi Ian Watkin, providing the voice of the food server droid here. Now Watkin was originally planned to appear in live action here, but much like the situation with Susie Porter, George Lucas opted for a droid server instead. Now outside of Star Wars, Watkin had various acting roles. Here he is in one of Peter Jackson's early works, 1992's Brain Dead. And oh my lord, I gotta be careful with what I show here, cause this film, like many of Jackson's pre Lord of the Rings works, is gory. Step right up, you dream out bastards! <laughs> Master? Because someone erased it from the archive memory. So remember in my episode 1 video where I talked about that Naboo star pilot that gets killed being played by Photoshop co-creator and visual effects whiz John Noel? Yeah, well this kid is his son, Alex Noel. Literally the only other thing I can find out about Alex though is that he voiced this dog wizard character in Politicats, one of the animated shows Mosh did on their Shut Up Cartoons channel. Random, I know. There's lots of dogs here, but I'm the only one that's also a wizard. Do you see any way through negotiations to bring the Separatists back into the Republic? 
playing Queen Jamelia is British Indian actress Aisha Darka. Darka received great acclaim for her role as a young woman brainwashed into contemplating becoming a suicide bomber in the 1997 Tamil film The Terrorist. She's also done work with the Royal Shakespeare Company and has appeared in many British television shows like Holby City, Doctor Who and Coronation Street. I gave you chance after chance to come clean. No more secrets. Ring any bells. After all these years, we were beginning to think you weren't coming. Playing the Kaminoan Torn Ware is New Zealand actress Raina Owen, who actually was there on set wearing this on her head. Makes sense, you gotta make sure McGregor's eyeline is correct, but credit to the actors for keeping a straight face. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, Owen has appeared in many movies and shows. Here she is alongside Vin Diesel in The Last Witch Hunter. The laws serve to control and contain magic. It is only by the operations of this council that another war does not begin. But her most famous role was in the 1994 film Once Were Warriors, directed by Die Another Day director Lee Tamahori. I wasn't fair when Grace needed me. This time I'm gonna do the right thing by her and you're not gonna stop me. This movie was a huge hit in New Zealand and also happened to star Django Fett himself, Tamara Morrison. I'll be talking about him very soon. Please tell your master, Cypher Diaz, that his order will be met on time. Lama Su is voiced by Australian actor Anthony Phelan. Like many Aussie actors, Phelan had a stint in Home and Away. In it, he gets crushed to death by a car, but he later comes back to life to walk his daughter down the aisle. Awfully nice of God to resurrect him like that. You didn't think I was going to miss my beautiful girl's wedding, did you? <laughs> he also played this priest in the Angelina Jolie directed film Unbroken. Love, fine. Enemy. And here he is in the TV series The Gloaming, which also happened to star his fellow Kaminoan, Raina Owen. Lama Su and Tonway back together in the flesh. It's always about your self interest. Watch your mouth! We're in this mess because of you and your temper. How do you think Grace feels having you in this house? They are totally obedient, taking any order without question. So for the longest time, I always assumed these clones were played by Tamura Morrison, when in fact, these particular ones are played by fellow Kiwi, Bodie Taylor. Taylor has only two roles outside of Star Wars. Here he is in the 2003 film, The Legend of Johnny Lingo, playing the role of Pua. The women have gone mad over this Johnny Lingo. I hope we get the host of my own welcome party. But more recently, Taylor started his own YouTube channel where he documented the making of a taiha, a traditional Maori staff weapon. Basically, it's a very hard wood and uh, very um, interesting to carve. Dad, Ton Wee's here. Playing the young Boba Fett is Kiwi actor Daniel Logan. Now, what's immediately interesting about Logan is that he has a previous link to fellow clone actor Bodie Taylor, for he too was in The Legend of Johnny Lingo, playing the younger version of Taylor's character. Well, she's ugly once we get finished with you. So yeah, these two have played differently aged versions of each other on two different occasions. Whether that's a huge coincidence or not, I haven't been able to find out. Now, Logan had acted prior to Star Wars. Here he is in an episode of Hercules The Legendary Journeys as a sort of demonic illusion with some facial VFX that hasn't aged too well. <laughs> and post Attack of the Clones, he reprised the role of Boba in the animated Clone Wars show. We're all in it together, right? Thanks but I can handle myself. And he's continued acting still, but you might find his cameo in Sharknado 4 interesting, for he plays the role of, get this, Captain Fett. The pulse didn't work! The thing is still moving, and it's headed straight toward Vegas! They'll do their job well. I'll guarantee that. So yeah, New Zealand actor Tamura Morrison plays Django Fett. Morrison has been in a load of stuff. You might know him as Aquaman's dad. How is it that I can breathe underwater but you can still drink me on the table? 
That's my superpower. <laughs> he also played Moana's dad. I know, I know, but you don't go out there. It's dangerous. And remember that alien that gives Ryan Reynolds the ring in Green Lantern? I was personally surprised to find out that was Morrison. The ring, it chose you. Take it. Place the ring in the lantern. Morrison is also good friends with Jay Lagaya. He was best man at his wedding after all. And like Lagaya, Morrison also loves to sing. In 2014, he released a cover album called Ten. Speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. Also, it's definitely worth noting Django Fett's stunt double, Scott McLean. And this story might ring a bell for some of you. You see, in the early 2010s, McLean was doing stunts for the second installment in the Hangover series. And he very almost died when performing a dangerous stunt on the streets of Bangkok. It was a massive controversy and he took the filmmakers to court for the working conditions they put him under. Though I'm pleased to report, he recovered. But I think this here is a good reminder of how dangerous a stunt person's job can be at times. I guess I'm your stepbrother. I had a feeling you might show up someday. So here we have another well-known actor who wasn't particularly famous at the time of filming. This is, of course, Australian actor Joel Edgerton playing the young Owen Lars. Edgerton went on to act in more films than I can count. The Great Gatsby, Zero Dark Thirty, Black Mass, and Bright. I wanted to be a cop since I was a little kid. I have nothing else. My badge means more to me than the air I breathe. And in 2015, he directed and starred in the psychological thriller, The Gift. Are you going to tell her or should I? Also worth noting that Joel Edgerton's brother, Nash Edgerton, worked as Ewan McGregor's stunt double for episodes two and three. This is my girlfriend, Baru. Hello. And playing the young Baru is fellow Australian Bonnie Peace. Peace has acted in many films and shows. She made her debut as a trapeze artist on the Australian kids show, High Flyers. The guy, who is he? You've got to pick him for your stooge. He's so cute. In a weird sort of way. And this is crazy. In 2017, she, along with her husband, became a whistleblower of a sex trafficking cult called Nixon. There was an HBO documentary all about this. In 2020, their founder, Keith Rainier, got sentenced to 120 years in jail, and his associate, Smallville actress Alison Mack, got jail time too. But back to Bonnie, for she's also an avid singer slash songwriter. Here's a track from her most recent EP, Found. It broke my heart. I fell through the night, but I found myself. After I lost my leg, I just couldn't ride anymore until I healed. Australian actor Jack Thompson plays Klee Glass. Now, outside of Australia, Thompson's not that well known, but he's a big name down under, coming to prominence during the Australian New Wave era in films like Sunday Too Far Away and The Man from Snowy River, where he acted alongside Kirk Douglas. You should advertise this stuff in the bulletin. The new miracle cure for appetite. You think I was going to leave you a share of the mind? Thompson, though, could have become a big name internationally when he met up with Steven Spielberg and actually filmed screen tests for the role of Oscar Schindler in Schindler's List. But at the last minute, Spielberg had a change of heart and opted instead to cast fellow Star Wars actor Liam Neeson. As I explained to you earlier, I am quite convinced that 10,000 more systems will rally to our cause with your support, gentlemen. The absolute legend that is the late Sir Christopher Lee plays Count Dooku. Where do I begin? Dracula, Lord Summerisle, Saruman. You know what this guy's done, so let me tell you what you might not know about him. Prior to becoming an actor, he served in the Royal Air Force during the Second World War. In 1962, Ian Fleming, the author of the James Bond books, actually offered him the role of the villainous Doctor No, and he accepted. Though the film's producers had other ideas, so he missed out and had to wait another 12 years before he got his shot at another Bond villain, Scaramanga, in The Man with the Golden Gun. Now you know the classic spoof comedy Airplane? Lee turned down a role in that movie. And that role instead went to Leslie Nielsen. 
Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Lee went on to call that decision a big mistake. Though, to be fair, it's hard to imagine anyone but Nielsen playing that role. Another mistake Lee made was unknowingly choosing to star in a softcore porn film. It was called Eugenie, and he plays the role of a narrator, only appearing in scenes where everyone has their clothes on. For no voice save that of the passions can bring you to complete happiness. Now I can't continue without talking about Lee's music career, for he found he had a hell of a passion for symphonic heavy metal. And once I'm done chilling out to jail a Gaia, you can bet your ass I'm gonna be rocking to Jingle Hell. Jingle Hell, Jingle Hell, Jingle Hell. The Techno Union Army is at your disposal, Count. English-born Australian actor Christopher Truswell, I have to thank, for he's made my job very easy here. He voices every single bloody alien in this scene and then some. Here is all the roles he plays. <laughs> The banking clan will sign your treaty. We must get the starships back into space. Is at your disposal, Count. Probably self-made by a warrior, not associated with any known society. That is all the same guy. That's incredible. Now, outside of Star Wars, Truswell was best known for his role on the Australian sitcom, Hey Dad. Actually, it's got a lot better lately. <sighs> Pleased to hear it. Oh, well, last week, Andy tried to strangle me twice. <laughs> no, he laughs when he does it. <laughs> and he's a talented singer, too. You might be interested to know he played Elwood in a stage production of the Blues Brothers. My heart's calculating, my sweetheart will be waiting. The Trade Federation is to take delivery of a droid army here. And it is clear that Viceroy Gunray is behind the assassination attempts on Senator Amidala. So you might wonder why I'm going to focus on some random extra here, but bear with me. This senator stood next to Jar Jar here is played by Australian actress Nicole Fantel. Now, if you've played Final Fantasy XII, I've got a quick game for you. Listen to Fantel's voice in the film Queen of the Damned and see if you can pinpoint who she plays in that game. Take a listen. So this is Lestat's house. Are you hungry for something else? Don't you want to have some fun? Don't do that. Okay, brownie points if you got it, because she plays the role of Fran. You've let your eyes betray your heart. Yeah, kind of interesting we have here an actor who's bridged the gap between Star Wars and Final Fantasy, given the Biggs and Wedge references they've done over the years. Playing this alien is Australian makeup and visual effects artist Stephen Boyle. And I am shocked about this find, for I have googled the shit out of it, and I haven't heard anyone else mention it. So I'm totally taking credit for this. Boyle's line in the film is back to front. Watch what happens when you play it in reverse. We need that one, Pretty interesting, right? Anyway, this is Boyle's only time in front of the camera, for his focus is on creature design and makeup visual effects. He's worked as a makeup effects technician on films like The Matrix Revolutions, King Kong, and many, many more productions. This is a crisis. The Senate must vote the Chancellor emergency powers. So, I already talked about this Senate speaker in my episode 1 video, where he was played by Jerome St. John Blake. But in some scenes such as this in episode 2, he's played by a different person. This right here is Australian actor David Bowers, who's had bit roles in various films and shows. For example, here he is in The Matrix Revolutions. Anyway, you're getting through this door. It's over my big dead ass. <laughs> Okay, so this one has been extremely confusing to research, as there's a lot of conflicting information on the internet as to who even plays the Geonosian leader, Poggle the Lesser here. Because according to IMDB, he's played by Martin Chokas, who you might know better as Dr. Kafka in Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Celeborn in The Lord of the Rings. 
Tell me, where is Gandalf? For I much desire to speak with him. However, as I found out, Chokas simply was there on set speaking the lines, you know, for reference for the VFX and ADR work in post. But even that info is weird, because I then found out about an actor called Richard Stride, and there's many sources that say that he mo-capped for Poggle, so perhaps these two split the work between them? Unfortunately, I can't confirm. His voice actor, however, is a bit more certain. This scrambled vocal track you can see Ben Burt playing around with here. Look up the be Yeah, that's the voice of Ernie Phaselius, who's best known for directing the very first Star Wars parody, 1978's Hardware Wars. Y'all be alright, don't worry about me. Ah, oh, oh, what a martyr. martyr. I don't see you, you later, you martyr. You. Now, Ben Burt seems to fall back on Phaselius from time to time, for he provided the voice of those Chinese pilots in the Temple of Doom. And remember that guy upset over the death of the Rancor? The sound of him sobbing is not his voice, it's that of Phaselius. <laughs> Okay, so there's a ton of people to talk about here, and I can't possibly mention everyone. Not that there'd be any reason to, as a lot of these performers aren't very well known, and for many, Star Wars Episode 2 is their only credit, and many of these actors are simply uncredited, so I have no way of knowing who some of these guys are. But let's rush through everyone who I can find out at least something about. Let's go. Ayla Sakura, played by Amy Allen. She worked as one of ILM's production assistants, and also cameos in the night scene as a set of triplets. Plo Koon, played by Matt Sloan. He was one of the film's animatronic technicians. Kit Fisto and Stacey Teen, played by Zachariah Jensen and Jesse Jensen. Lumping these two together because they are brothers who worked as set carpenters on the movie. Luminara Unduli, played by Mary Oyaya. Born in Kenya and did a lot of commercial and modeling work in Australia. Baris Offi, played by Nalini Krishan, a Fiji born actress who does occasional acting work in Australia and in Bollywood. Egan Kola, played by Tux Akinda Yeni, a practitioner of the Chinese martial art, Li Hui Bafa. Definitely butchering that one. Tux now works as a personal trainer and managing director of a security company in Sydney. Bulta Swan, played by Mimi Darafay. She was doing a degree in architecture when she filmed this and graduated a year later. Nikonas Tasu and Seth Jet Josal, played by Nick Anastasu and Joseph Jet Sally. These guys worked on the film as editors. Represent. Kat Keen, played by Zoraya Hamilton. Zoraya was a department coordinator on the film and now owns a cocktail bar and restaurant on the Gold Coast in Australia. Joe Clad Danver, played by Kyle Rowling. Now, this guy worked as Christopher Lee's stunt double during his fight scenes. He also stands in for General Grievous in the next movie, where he wears a green screen suit, and he works to choreograph the fight scenes themselves. In fact, the man himself teaches a lightsaber course at the National Institute of Dramatic Art in Sydney. Holy shit, I want to do that course. Roth Adele Masona, played by Leonard L. Thomas. Now this guy's a prominent actor. Here he is reuniting with Samuel L. Jackson in the movie Black Snake Moon. You think I want to hurt you, lass? I'll take a bullet for you. Would you now? And last but not least, let's talk about Shark T, who is played by Israeli actress and model Oli Shoshan, a former member of the Israeli Defense Forces, much like actress Gal Gadot, actually. Shoshan went on to have a successful modelling career in Australia, making appearances in the Australian version of Wheels of Fortune, where she presented prizes. She then went on to design her own fashion line for women's sportswear and lingerie, and more recently she worked in interior design and as a real estate agent. Now, there's definitely more actors in this scene, but information on everyone else is either uninteresting or non-existent. So, let's move on. Right after I address this bombshell. Apparently, George Lucas's daughters, Katie and Amanda, were big fans of the boy band NSYNC. So as a treat for them, George arranged it so that three members of the band, JC, Chris and Joey, filmed cameos for this movie. They were set to appear in the Geonosis battle scene as Jedi. Now, for whatever reason, they didn't make the final cut. 
those Star Wars fans and NSYNC fans? That's an extremely narrow demographic you're appealing to there. So I guess maybe they thought there'd be too much backlash from pissy Star Wars fans. Though it is crazy to think that within the Lucasfilm vault somewhere lies footage of NSYNC as Jedis. Not gonna lie, I kinda wanna see that footage. Hashtag release the NSYNC cut. We must get the starships back into space. So the Neimoidian Rune Harko was played by Jerome St. John Blake and voiced by James Taylor in episode 1. But in episode 2, he's voiced by the previously mentioned Christopher Truswell, but the man inside the mask is British actor Alan Rusko. Rusko does a lot of acting work, specialising in playing many aliens and monsters in films and shows like The Fifth Element and Doctor Who. So General Grievous is played by famed Star Wars creator, George Lucas. Okay, that statement is misleading, but technically true. You see, the voice isn't Lucas's, but the coughs are. <coughs> yeah, the story goes that George Lucas had a bad bout of bronchitis during filming, so he had his coughs recorded and then they were used during the film. <coughs> Jedi scum. As for Grievous' voice actor, that is famed sound designer Matthew Wood, who I have already talked about in this series, but it would feel a bit weird not to credit him for his most well-known role. Wood also voices the battle droids here, <laughs> and he reprises these roles in the Clone Wars cartoon. And it's really interesting to see his raw performance in the vocal booth, as there's a lot of post-processing done with his voice to achieve the robotic sound. Do you really think I would leave the hyperdrive of this ship unguarded? I thought the hyperdrive was fixed! And here's a few more fun facts about him. Wood has received five different nominations for sound editing at the Academy Awards, but horrifically has never won. That is a tragedy, if you ask me. Also, here's a few more voice roles he's done over the years you might recognize. All in one piece! Which means we can find the cargo! And here's a fun family link. His uncle is American sports commentator Lon McCarran, whose voice will be instantly recognizable to anybody into the competitive poker scene. So it comes down to the river. He's going to need a nine and a nine only to stick around, and the river car is a heart! Oh! An ace? A fine addition to my collection. Two Jedi have landed in the main hangar bay. We're tracking them. So the voice of this Neimoidian, canonically known as Lushros Dauphine, is provided by Wally himself, Ben Burt. Now, I also talked about Burt's before, but I should shout out his legendary work as a sound designer, for he was the guy behind some of the series' most iconic bits of audio, from R2-D2's binary speech, Darth Vader's breathing, and the sound of lightsabers. And whilst he wasn't the inventor of it, he was the guy that popularized the use of the infamous Wilhelm scream. <laughs> but the man inside Dauphine's suit is Australian makeup and VFX artist Colin Ware. Ware has done a ton of work in the industry, but in episode 3, he got to work on the look for the Emperor and burnt up Anakin. It's amazing how ugly they can make these things these days. <laughs> didn't flinch. That was cool. didn't flinch. <laughs> Fire ships on the left and the right. We'll take you in. So the fire ship pilot here is another cameo appearance from John Knoll again. Yep, the guy behind Photoshop and many Star Wars visual effects is apparently the guy behind that mask. Also, Knoll lends a hand in various scenes in this movie. Literally. In the scene where the ship is going down, this shot of Anakin's hand grabbing a cable is not here in Christensen's hand. It's Knoll's. Knoll's hand is also used here when Anakin disarms Dooku. That's me as, uh, as Anakin. The 
the Senate will vote to continue the war as long as Grievous is alive. Okay, yet more cameos to go through here. In the background are George Lucas' daughters again. This is Katie, and this is Amanda. The two show up again in the opera house scene as Anakin walks through this hallway. The blue guy who Katie is talking to, I'm sure you'll recognize, but I'll get to him in a bit. But the guy with his back to us is Amanda's real life husband, American businessman, Jason Halakainen. Oh, and whilst I'm here, there's a ton of other cameos you'll find in the opera house. Mostly crew members, but some other people of note. See this guy with the big hat? That's 3PO himself, Anthony Daniels yet again. Already talked about Daniels as well, so I'll throw in a clip from his appearance on The Muppet Show, where he got to do a tap dance number. You might be thinking they got a professional dancer for that bit, but no, that is really Anthony Daniels in there. <laughs> then there's this guy down here. That is Pablo Hidalgo, known for his work with the Lucasfilm Story Group, and his infamous emotions are not to be shared tweet. Eesh. And you see this private viewing box here? Well, all six of these guys are visual effects artists who work for ILM. Probably the best known amongst them is Rob Coleman, who is the one in white here. He picked up two best VFX norms at the Oscars for episodes one and two, and was in charge of the animation department on the Lego movie. So, whew, that guy knows his stuff. The other five people in the box are Roger Guyot, Denise Reem, Jill Brooks, Janet Lewin, and hey, there's John Noel again. How's it going, man? But without a doubt, the most notable cameo in this scene is from good old George himself. He plays the character Baron Not Whiskey Papanoida. That's a mouthful. This character goes on to appear in an episode of The Clone Wars, but there he's played by a different actor. Now George has made cameos in a ton of other things, like the teen drama The O.C. The prom is a great American tradition. It's important to experience the things of being a teenager, when you're a teenager. The American sitcom Just Shoot Me. Ah! Oh. <laughs> ah! Here he is randomly showing up in Beverly Hills Cop 3. Excuse me. Hey! That's not fair. And he even voices himself in Robot Chicken. Uh, well, um... And I thought they smelled bad on the outside. But his most bizarre cameo is in the movie Hook. See this couple on the bridge here? That is apparently George Lucas kissing Carrie Fisher. Yeah, Spielberg and Lucas are good friends, and they do like to throw in the odd Easter egg referencing each other in their films. What with E.T. showing up in Episode 1, and Club Obi-Wan showing up in the Temple of Doom. Hello there. Now before I move on, I think it's worth highlighting the two women George Lucas has married. His first wife was Marsha Lucas. She was a big part of the team responsible for editing the original Star Wars trilogy, even picking up an Oscar for Episode 4. She also edited movies like Taxi Driver and George Lucas' prior film to Star Wars, American Graffiti. And George's second and current wife is Melody Hobson. She was listed as number 94 in Forbes' list of the world's 100 most powerful women. And it's easy to see why that is, because she was the chairwoman of DreamWorks Animation and is now the chairwoman of a little company called Starbucks. Star Wars? Starbucks. Nice. <laughs> Okay, let's get to talking about the guys behind the Wookiee suits. And we have to begin with the walking carpet himself, Chewbacca, who I'm sure many of you will know is played by the late Peter Mayhew. Mayhew played Chewbacca in a ton of things, from the Star Wars films themselves, to a 1980 appearance on The Muppet Show, to a Christmas-themed episode of Glee. <laughs> Yes, that was Mayhew in the suit there. But did Mayhew have other non-Chewie roles? Well, yes. 
Before the original Star Wars, Mayhew was cast as a Minotaur in the 1977 fantasy film Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> This film was directed by Sam Wanamaker, who, fun fact, is the father of Zoe Wanamaker, the actress that plays Madame Hooch in Harry Potter. But Mayhew had some roles not in a suit for once, such as in the 2008 Neo Noir film Yesterday Was a Lie, and in 2004, he tried his hand at voice acting, playing the character of Susha in the English dub of Dragon Ball GT A Hero's Legacy. Oh, it's you. For a second there, I thought I was in trouble. <laughs> Wait a second, you're the one that escaped from Mamba! Now, when it comes to the other Wookiees, many were played by Australian basketball players. Remember, episodes 2 and 3 were shot in Sydney. Amongst the players were David Stiff, Julian Cajou, and Michael Kingma, with Kingma portraying the most noteworthy Wookiee, Tafel. <laughs> Motion capture people. If you want to do it well, you gotta make a fool of yourself. And that gets my respect. <laughs> After Star Wars, Kingma has been hit in the convention scene, but has been struggling with a drug addiction, and has pleaded not guilty to two charges of assault. Best not get in the bad side of a Wookiee. The droid don't pull people's arms out of their sockets when they lose. Wookiees are known to do that. <laughs> Greetings, young Jedi. What brings you to our remote sanctuary? The Utapawan Tion Midon is played by New Zealand Australian actor Bruce Spence. Now, Spence is one of those actors that was made for this series, because you'll have likely seen him loads of times without realising it was him. Firstly, he got his breakthrough back in 1971 in the Australian comedy Stalk. Is that what she tells you? Word for word. <laughs> what a load of crap! But international audiences will probably know him best from the Mad Max films, acting alongside Mel Gibson. Look, we had a deal. I show you the gas and you let me go, right? The arrangement was I wouldn't kill you. After all I've done for you... I reckon you got a bargain, didn't you? You might also know him from Ace Ventura When Nature Calls. Say hello to my stinky little friend! Oh! No! And I was surprised to find out he portrayed the mouth of Sauron in the extended cut of Return of the King. The halfling was dear to the I see. <laughs> oh, and here's a voice role of his playing Chum the Shark in Finding Nemo. Dolphins, yeah, they think they're so cute. Oh, look at me, I'm a flipping little dolphin. Let me flip for you, I know something. And amongst his other roles were appearances in Pirates of the Caribbean, the Chronicles of Narnia, and The Matrix Revolutions. But seriously, I am skipping the surface with this guy. Down here, I make the rules. Down here, I make the threats. Also, before I continue, this Utapawan stood here behind Spence is played by Australian actor Garan D. Clout. He's been in a few notable things like Paris of the Caribbean as well, and here's Andrew Garfield helping him out in Hacksaw Ridge. Andy Walker. Also known as? <laughs> Ghoul. Ghoul. Ghoul, you're okay, you're okay. He was also the man behind the Xenomorph suit in Alien Covenant. Master Skywalker, there are too many of them. What are we going to do? Ross Biedman plays the Jedi youngling Saws Van Deem. Yeah, his on-screen name is an anagram of his real name. Now, Biedman didn't pursue acting after Star Wars, but he did have two other roles as a kid. One was in a flashback scene in the British sitcom My Life in Film. I never felt comfortable in front of camera. I wanted to direct. They were happy days. And his other role had him portray this innocent-looking kid in a made-for-TV documentary. Well, it's, uh, it's nice to see him in a more carefree role where we get to see him live free as a child full of youthful wonders. Oh god, the documentary is about the Hindenburg disaster. In just 34 seconds, the mighty airship is destroyed. Wow, filmmakers really wanted this kid dead. Now, after Star Wars, Biedman embraced his newfound fame with many convention appearances, 
Here he is posing with his murderer. And now Ross is busy doing editing and graphics work for our advertising campaigns. Wait a minute. British guy with an affinity for Star Wars who does editing work and his name is Ross. Sounds like a right loser. <laughs> So the Jedi youngling here, Zet Jukasa, is played by Jet Lucas, who I'm sure many of you will know is the son of George Lucas. Now Jet didn't act in anything else, but he went on to work for three years as a creative executive on Heavy Metal magazine, and more recently he worked as a visual effects coordinator on The Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett. Also, fun fact about George Lucas's kids, Amanda, Katie and Jet are actually all adopted. But in 2013, Lucas and Hobson welcomed a fourth child called Everest, who is biologically Lucas's and was born via a surrogate mother. We're receiving a message from the Chancellor's office, then. So here we have another cameo. The captain of the Alderaan ship is played by the late Jeremy Bullock. Yeah, I'm sure that name will sound familiar to Star Wars fans, for whilst he didn't voice him, he was the guy performing inside the Boba Fett suit in Episodes 5 and 6. And this is not the only cameo appearance Bullock made. You see this Imperial officer holding onto Leia here? That there is Boba Fett in the flesh. Luke! Luke, go to the trap! Though it is a shame about Bullock, as he had a sizable career outside of Star Wars that no one seems to talk about. For example, did you know that he made three appearances in Roger Moore's Bond films? One was as a Navy crewman in The Spy Who Loved Me, though he's quick to bite the dust in that. But he got recast for Octopussy and for Your Eyes Only as the character Smithers, one of Q's lab assistants. Smithers, how's the arm? Coming along very nicely, thank you, sir. Bullock also made a couple of appearances on Doctor Who. There is much strange at Iron Grunt's castle, Sir Edward. I told you of the knight that fights on that should be dead. And one of the guards told me there's a man from the stars that lives among them. A mighty wizard who makes magic weapons. And here he is in the 1984 television series Robin of Sherwood. Let him see your power. Let the terror of darkness hunt him down and hold him in the coldness of death. Has never been so fans of Australian soaps might recognise the handmaiden sat behind Padme here. That is Australian actress Christy Wright, best known for playing the character of Chloe Richards in Home and Away. How back could he or want? He brought it back. He knows where I live. <laughs> Okay, so I think it's worth pointing out the man inside the suit of this particular Neymardian. Yeah, random, I know, but in that suit is American actor Nick Jameson, who has been in a ton of things with over 100 film credits. You might know him from 24. Whatever it was you said to Mrs. Hassan to keep her here, must have been very convincing. And he's done a ton of voice roles. Morbius in Spider-Man the Animated Series. I feel energy surging through me. Coach Mosse Oleander in Psychonauts. There's only one way out of here. Fighting! He voices Sam in Sam and Max Hit the Road. I wish I had absolute power to decide who lives and who dies. And he often stands in for Ian McDiarmid as the voice of the Emperor in many Star Wars shows and video games. This deranged former Jedi has no place in my vision for the future. I expect you to correct this head. Okay, so in the hologram here are two cameos. The woman with the blue saber is Olivia McCallum. She worked as a production assistant on the film and is the daughter of the film's producer, Rick McCallum. And the guy you see with the green saber is stuntman and fight choreographer Nick Gillard, playing Jedi Master Sin Dralig. That's his name spelled backwards. This character appears very briefly in an episode of The Clone Wars, and you can fight him in the Star Wars Episode 3 video game. Now, Gillard has had quite a fascinating career. When George Lucas approached him to choreograph for The Phantom Menace, he at first wanted Gillard to play Darth Maul. The brief 
for Darth Maul was uh, that he should look like a heroin addict. <laughs> And, and they said, you it. will be perfect. <laughs> Good thing he has a sense of humour. That wasn't a very nice thing to say. Now, Gillard has worked as a stuntman on tons of things, and he makes the odd cameo appearance in films he works on. For example, this is him in Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. The Americana, the Kämpfen wie Biber. <laughs> And it's definitely worth pointing out his work on the Alien franchise. In Alien 3, he performed a stunt which required him to be set on fire for over two minutes, which at the time of filming was a Guinness World Record for the longest amount of time spent set alight. Now there's a ton of other actors who play Jedi in this movie, but all the notable ones I already mentioned in my episode 2 video, with perhaps the exception of this guy who you see Anakin pass by here. That is an Ivory Coast musician called Gervais Coffey, who heads an Australian based Afro-Caribbean band called the African Diaspora. Now would Anakin have gone through with Order 66 had these chill out beats been echoing throughout the Jedi Temple? I don't think so. Medically, she's completely healthy. For reasons we can't explain, we are losing her. So unfortunately, whoever provides the voice of the midwife droid is uncredited and unknown. But this droid is voiced by American sound editor David Accord, who collaborates often with Grievous voice actor Matthew Wood. And like Wood, Accord lends his voice for many minor Star Wars roles too. Here is three of them. Cut the pleasantries, Kraken. Do you want the cargo or not? Raider! The Separatists have very little compassion. Yes, that was Accord as the droid there singing along to the Imperial March theme. <laughs> oh, and uh, how fitting, because that brings me to... Where is Padme? Is she safe? Is she alright? Okay, so it's pretty cool to know that Hayden Christensen is in the suits here, but Vader would be nothing without the sultry tones of one James Earl Jones, who, fun fact, is the son of Robert Earl Jones, who you might recognize from various films like The Sting. They gave me till four to come up with the cash. They don't get it. I'm dead. Now, James Earl Jones' first movie role was back in 1964 in the comedy classic Doctor Strangelove. The fire is out. The emergency power is on. Everything seems to check out all right. We'll advise. Then Jones went on to have a career that is nothing short of legendary. Amongst his many, many movie appearances are Cutting and the Barbarian, Coming to America, The Sandlot, and of course, the Lion King. Don't turn your back on me, Scar. But let's talk more about Jones's lesser known roles. Like, did you know that he once portrayed Santa Claus? Yeah, he did just that in an episode of the Disney animated show, Recess. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Yeah, Jones made one-off appearances in a bunch of TV series. From House. If you want me dead, then pull the trigger. To Will and Grace. The voice, okay, Jimmy Choo. Jimmy Choo. Jimmy Choo up here. Jimmy Choo. Jimmy Choo. Jimmy Choo. To his numerous cameos in The Simpsons. Ah! This is indeed a disturbing universe. And check out this clip of him in The Big Bang Theory, pranking a unsuspecting homeowner. <laughs> And if you've ever wanted to hear the word of God brought to you by Darth Vader, just check out James O. Jones Reads the Bible. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. 
I spent so long looking for Ezekiel 2517 and I came up short. I am so sorry. Captain Antilles. Yes, Your Highness. So the young Captain Antilles is played by Australian actor Rohan Nicol. Nicol is a prominent actor on Australian television, most noteworthy for playing Ben Estoni in Home and Away. Hey, hey! Okay, now if Dean can stay the night under my roof with my daughter, then he can stay to have breakfast with her parents. And he's made a bunch of minor movie appearances. Here he is acting with Matthew McConaughey in Fool's Gold. Why did you pick the North Beach? I, I didn't. It's the only beach on the island not blocked by the reef. Yes. And uh, this is him getting a sword through his chest in Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> hmm. For whatever reason, he seems to get typecasted as captains a lot. Also, before I move on, the lady in white you see walking behind Bail Organa here is a Brazilian actress and model by the name of Caroline de Souza Correa. She's had minor acting roles like here in the 2005 film Stealth. God, he's such a chauvinist. Oh, wait, hold on, that's not true. Look, I bow down before the superiority of the opposite sex in many respects. And this is her starring alongside Benicio Del Toro in a beyond extensive ad campaign for Magnum Ice Cream. You couldn't wait for one more day. Also, I think it's worth highlighting Correa's dress here. It's unusually stunning for a piece meant to be worn by an extra, isn't it? And the reason for that is that this dress was originally meant for Natalie Portman. But because the storyline required Padme to wear clothes that could hide her pregnancy, this slim fitting piece naturally couldn't be used. But instead of it going to waste, Correa's character inherited it. So I think it might surprise you to know that the incredibly small role of Queen Apollana is played by the second youngest ever person to get nominated for Best Actress at the Oscars. Yeah, this is Kiwi actress Keisha Castle Hughes, and she got nominated for her lead role in the 2002 New Zealand family drama, Whale Rider. I called them and they came, but it wasn't right. She then went on to do a ton of stuff, she appeared in the music video for the Prince song Cinnamon Girl, where she plays a Muslim victimized after the 9 11 attacks. Cinnamon Girl. Now, I would say it was a good idea to portray the discrimination faced against Arab Americans during this time, but does that really work all that well when you actually have her blow up an airport in the music video? Muslims aren't terrorists, so let's portray one as a terrorist. Now, much like Shmi actress Penilla August, Castle Hughes also played Mary of Nazareth, this time in the 2006 film The Nativity Story. How can this be, since I've been with no man? But my audience might know Keisha better for two of her more recent television roles. This is her in an episode of The Walking Dead, I guess it's easy to make a deal with the devil when you're not the one paying the price. But many of you will know her best as Obara Sand in Game of Thrones. Oberyn tossed his spear at my feet and said, Girl or boy, we fight our battles. Okay, so I was considering talking about the actors who play Padme's parents in my episode 2 video, but I decided against it as they were only seen in the deleted scenes. However, they're here in episode 3, albeit very briefly, so let's talk about them. Padme's father, Rui Nabri, is played by Australian actor Graham Blundell. Remember that movie called Stalk with Bruce Spence? Well, Blundell was in that too. We're as scarce as hen's bloody teeth. We're as scarce as hen's bloody teeth. We've got four years of specialist knowledge up there. Well, we don't often use it, but it's always there if they want it, and that is the point. But Blundell was best known for his lead performance in Alvin Purple, a uh, pretty dated 1973 Australian sex comedy. <laughs> but let's move on to Padme's mother, Jobal Nabari, who is played by the late Trisha Noble. Now, Noble had a hell of a career as an actress and singer, 
She was a mainstay on Australian television, with regular appearances on the music and variety television series Bandstand. This then set off her career as a pop star. She split her time between the UK and Australia, releasing several singles and albums. And while she didn't quite hit the big time in Britain, she had quite a lot of success down under, scoring four top ten singles, with two of them hitting number one. But accidents will happen when you least expect them. Accidents will happen. Noble then pursued acting, with appearances in a bunch of stuff like Carry On Camping. Please, sir, I don't seem to have a pair. I wouldn't say that, dear. Oh, hardy ha. And she showed up in American TV too, including one off appearances in The Love Boat and Buck Rogers in the 25th Century. Hello, Buck Rogers. Okay, now I see where Padme got her confidence from. She can't do that! Shoot her! Or something! And she was a series regular in the 80s police procedural Strike Force. After all this is over, we're gonna try very hard to help you. So the young version of Tarkin here is played by Australian actor Wayne Pigram. This is him in an episode of Lost. I harness this energy and give it to others. But he was best known for his role as Scorpius in the sci-fi series Farscape. And when you listen to him here, you can immediately see why he got the role of Tarkin. What species are you? And who are you working for? Yeah, he sounds so much like Peter Cushing. It's uncanny. You don't know how hard I found it signing the order to terminate your life. Your adherence to orders is selective. The regional governors now have direct control over their territories. I have unconditional authority on a gamut base. So it's my theory that Pigram had a speaking role that got cut. I mean, all that makeup work and expert casting for a few seconds on screen? Yeah, surely they were planning more for him. Surely. Now, outside of acting, Pigram is an avid drummer. In fact, he played the drums as part of a rock band called Signal Room. Grand Moff Tarkin on the beat. So here is a woman with a fascinating story. The brief appearance from Bail Organa's wife is brought to you by Australian actress and singer Rebecca Jackson Mendoza, who I'm chuffed as hell to see is alive. Because in 1999, she was the victim of a knife attack from her ex-husband, and due to the blood loss, she suffered a stroke and had to be put on a life support machine. But amazingly, she made a full recovery. In fact, doctors dubbed her the Miracle Girl, and just six months later, she began writing songs. And she would go on to sing those songs as part of a pop duo called Jackson Mendoza, performing with her sister, Natalie Mendoza. Here is their debut single, Venus on Mars. <laughs> Hey, Princess Leia's mum made some gashy shit. The group, though, didn't last long as the sisters went on to pursue acting careers, with Rebecca going on to have a successful line of work performing in stage musicals. Some of her credits include a German production of Miss Saigon, a Japanese production of We Will Rock You, and here she is in Toronto, performing as Galadriel in a musical production of The Lord of the Rings. Yeah, if like me you never knew there was a Lord of the Rings musical, there's a reason for that. 
because when it hit the London West End in 2007, it underperformed. And with a production budget of £25 million, pounds, yeah, it got shelved pretty quickly and is now regarded as the most costly musical mistake in West End history. But at least it does now allow us to say that Galadriel is Princess Leia's mum. And the last actor to talk about in the Star Wars prequels is the baby that plays Luke. And Leia. Yeah, they use the same baby to play both of them. And that baby's name is Aidan Barton, who is the son of the film's editor, Roger Barton. And you want to feel old? Aidan was born in 2003, which technically now makes him a legal adult. Look how old you've become. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any information available on what Aidan looks like now. Though you might believe otherwise if you follow Mark Hamill on Twitter, as he shared supposed photos of Aiden back in 2019. But then Aiden's father replied to his tweet saying, um, Mark, um, the, the images you shared, um, that's not my son. Awkward. I'm sorry. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is every actor in the Star Wars prequels. I'm thinking of covering an animated movie next, so let me know in the comments what movie you want to see me break down. Be sure to check out more of my videos by clicking these links, and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Thanks as always for watching guys, take care of yourselves.